I have a massive problem with my 12 volt system and in this video, we're going to fix it. We're also going to put it to the test in the real world, which means unfortunately, we've got to go water skiing on the Murray and we've got to go see the spectacular gap getaway in the Victorian high country before running through some real world power consumption scenarios to ensure that you choose the right battery for your setup. It's time to upgrade the battery in my canopy. So unfortunately, the batteries I had in my canopy, at least one of them have sort of lost performance. So I've decided to upgrade and this is a 320 amp hour custom lithium. This is their new style of battery and I'm really, really stoked with it. If you've seen my previous 12 volt video, I did a heap of power consumption explanation and I basically came to the conclusion that I needed at least 300 amp hours to run the induction and I had 220. This is gonna be a really, really good upgrade for me and it means I'm gonna be able to cook duck risotto for five hours straight without any worries. So I've got my cousin Evan helping me out install this today and I'm really glad to have him here. We're gonna work through it together. There are a couple of really good things about this battery. Number one, it's all made in Australia. If you go to the custom lithium website, you can see all their manufacturing facilities and I try and support manufactured in Australia products where I can. And batteries, when you're spending a bit of money on a battery, it's, it is really nice to know that you've got a quality product. This is an Australian manufactured product, which is a big deal in my mind. It's got a really nice case, which has got nuts at either side, and it means you can kind of mount it wherever in, in any orientation. It's, it's actually a really well thought out mounting case, I think. Previously, I had two 110s in parallel to give me my 220. And this is one singular battery and it's got just one positive and one negative terminal. One thing I didn't like about my other batteries was there were two Andersons per battery each, which meant four positive wires and four negative wires to my shunt and to the fuse, which was actually just a little bit messy. So this is gonna mean one and one, which is gonna clean up my 12 volt system a little bit. So I'm really stoked on that. So we're gonna go ahead and install this now. Right, Ev, what's going on? Uh, so just replacing these lithium batteries. Uh, we've just disconnected all your negatives from this shunt here. Yep. Um, about to disconnect all your positives from this fuse. Yeah. Um, disconnected that off of your inverter. So just getting through it. A bit messy at the moment, but we'll get there. We're just filming this so we can look back and remember which wires go where. So thank you guys for sitting through it patiently. pop out this fridge cage so we can get into the back here. Um, got a nice new lithium to fit today, so we'll see how we go. Awesome, thanks mate. The battery also comes with these really nice powder coated mounting brackets and in a designed and built first, we don't actually have to cut any mounting brackets to the battery. So Custom Lithium, by sheer luck, has designed these holes to mount into my canopy. We might have to do a little bit of die grinding, but I did check it all in CAD before I started making this video, and it should fit in perfectly if my CAD is accurate. So let's go ahead and fit all this off today. This is the situation. Got a hard wire running through the bottom of the fridge cage, which is 240. Don't want to touch that today. Don't want to cut and shut it. So basically we're disassembling the fridge cage and trying to retain that hard wire. Uh, and it's just classic. I never intended to pull anything out of this canopy, but maybe I should have just wired it a little bit differently. If the wire had run behind the fridge cage, then it would have been smooth sailing. So live and learn. Um, but we've got the battery in there now and we can just drill holes and mount it all up. Like I've got these little holes in the fridge cage, Ev. <laughs> Mate, she's 
She's solid, that. She's not going anywhere. How good. So we didn't even have to die grind this bracket. It just went straight into my uni strut. So thank you, Custom Lithium, for making it the exact height of my uni strut. Unreal. Alrighty, so obviously the battery is in a different spot, so I'm changing my 12 volt layout a little bit. I cut this out on the plasma table yesterday, and this is just to mount my DC DC charger. So I'll just pop some nut certs in here and then bolt it on using the spring nuts in the uni strut, and uh, we're good to go. So this time I've actually learned a little bit and I've put slots in everything. So uh, I'd highly recommend when you're building stuff and you have access to a plasma use slots obviously th these are gonna be nut suited so you can't slot them but uh yeah if you put slots in everything it really does make your life easier and it means no die grinding die grinding absolutely sucks uh and anyone who disagrees with me leave a comment below because i genuinely hate it um so richie gave it his best shot and he was this close uh, but he's just got uh, a new big bang of battery, big lid. We just went over a couple bits and pieces and noticed there was one earth that wasn't quite connected properly. So I think that was mostly his issues on, you know, average charging rates and stuff like that. So we just had a look at it all and yeah, made sure it was all good. And now we've got, what, 44 odd amps of charging. So we're, uh, we're ripping and ready to go. Thanks, Mitch. Local Thank hero. Happy days, mate. Ready for the tracks again. That's it. <laughs> there are a number of videos on my channel for the full DIY canopy series, which includes building this 12 volt system from scratch. So make sure you check them out if you haven't already. Just a quick refresher on the 12 volt system if you haven't seen it already. The battery powers a number of things, including neons, lights, charging drawer, water pump, 3000 watt inverter, induction, a fridge and a freezer, and some more creature comforts like a projector. Once it was all wired up, it was time for a real world test, so we hit the Murray River. And I spent a few nights putting the battery through its paces. I did a number of induction cooks, boiled water, ran the air fryer, charged a heap of camera gear, and the system was working flawlessly. And I had to do some water skiing in between that for the battery test. Yep, this video was pretty hard to make. After I'd done a preliminary test on the Murray, it was time to go a bit further away from home. So we headed straight for the Victorian high country and we were going to the Gap getaway. All right, this weekend I'm testing out my Canopy 12 volt. We're somewhere in the Victorian high country and we're getting to the Gap getaway, which is a really special pub up in the high country for a Friday night beer. So watch this space. Uh, I don't think there'll be much cooking tonight or, or 12 volt testing, but um, we'll do that tomorrow. For those of you who don't know, the Gap Getaway is a pub up in the high country which opens sometimes. Uh, it's kind of not always open. There are special dates, you wanna check their Facebook page. And it is a special, special view. So I've actually never been before. I'm really, really excited to go check it out. But it's not looking good. You can sort of see around that there's, uh, there's a bit of cloud cover. So I don't know if that's gonna happen. It turned out the Gap was actually closed that night, which was a bit of a blessing in disguise given the fog. So we'd have to cook our own dinner, which was great for my 12 volt video, but not so good for my hope of a Friday night beer at the pub. The plan was to return to the Gap the following day, which you'll see a bit later in this video. Tonight, we're putting the battery through its paces and we're cooking dinner for four. Pretty simple cook, four burgers, and we've got the air fryer here for some chips. So let's see how we go. The regular viewers of my channel might remember that with my old 12 volt system, I had a massive problem and here's a little bit of a refresher. Basically, if the inverter hasn't been on for a while and I switch it on, it triggers the battery BMS, which just shuts down the entire system. Let me just show you what happens when I turn my inverter on. And the good news is that with my new battery, this didn't happen at all. So that's a massive win for my 12 volt system. All right, let's get back into the cook now. <laughs> How's that induction cook, Nick? Mm. So much flavour. <laughs> From the How induction. do they do it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nick, what do you reckon of that running the air fryer while camping? Man, it's doing 135 amps 
which is 1.7 kilowatt. That's <laughs> wild. <laughs> Good. Pretty happy with that. They're legit. These are like grilled. Thank you, custom lithium. This whole cork has taken us 55 amp hours out of the 320. So we've got plenty of juice left. We can get another couple of meals out of that. Oh, some more chips. Mm. What we don't know is how many more cooks the wire has in it that just, <laughs> <laughs> no, just we took 1.7 yeah. kilowatts. <laughs> no, we built this pretty good. That's 1.7 kilowatts in it. That's like, <laughs> that's, that's like big boy stuff. <laughs> Loy Yang's ringing. I want to borrow some power. <laughs> Peter Dutton's ringing and he wants to know if he can borrow a nuclear power plant. After another successful induction cook for the group and solving Australia's power problems, it was time to make camp for the night, which ended up being somewhere down near Woods Point. We'd actually come up to the high country for some dirt biking, which was a little chaotic to say the least. How's this footage? Woo! Real close, boys. And if you're interested in dirt bikes, there's going to be a ton more content coming out later this year as we're currently working on a dirt bike carrier for the back of the vehicle. And as you can probably imagine, we're testing it to the absolute limits. Back into the 12 volt video now, and after a hard day's dirt biking, we finally made it to the gap. Alrighty, Nick, we're at the gap. Get away. And the battery system's packed up, so we're here getting <laughs> their version of deep fried. Just for the viewers watching, the battery system has not packed up. It's actually working really well. <laughs> it's just a really nice spot and the sun is setting. This it's is actually one of the amazing, like the all time spots. If you can get the opportunity to come here, I like, I, like highly recommend it. Highly, highly recommend like, it. Like that's the high country. There's like, this is private property on the top of a mountain in the middle of the high country. There's no boundary properties. I've wanted to come here for a number of years and it's, I, for whatever reason, you know, we've had broken cars or the weekend hasn't been right or the weather or whatever. And like, this is, this is like, like, when is the last time you're on the top of a mountain and it wasn't windy? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, un, this is unbelievable. Richard's divided by zero today. Like, there's people playing, like, hitting golf balls off the edge over there. They're doing sweet potato fries. You can get tap beer. The fires, two fireplaces going. The bloke that owns it is a legend. He's he's fighting brain cancer, so like come and support. Like look at this. It's like yeah, you can you can get a can out of your fridge and like go and sit in the like the damp forest, but like <laughs> this is pretty good. <laughs> come to the gap. The TD42 is probably the most popular motor. <laughs> oh, I'm turning it off. <laughs> After the gap getaway, I continued testing my 12 volt system late into the night, and with no issues to report. We can get into the power consumption scenarios now. Now that I've done some real world testing, let's run through a power consumption overview and compare my 310 amp hour battery to my old 220 amp hour batteries. The first scenario we're looking at is absolute worst case. Now I couldn't quite replicate this over the past few weekends. Here's a scenario from a previous trip where I came to the conclusion that I didn't have enough battery. So you arrive at camp, you put all your lights on, which are discharging the battery at a rate of five amps per hour for three hours until you go to bed. Now it's time to cook dinner and there's a delightful duck risotto on the menu, which you're cooking for a group of five, which takes 120 amp hours of your capacity in total, but it's pretty delicious and well worth it. Meanwhile, you've been charging various devices, which has taken up 11 amp hours in total. You've got drones, GoPros, cameras, everything else on the go and the fridges and freezers have been running the whole time and they'll have to run through the night and they'll take up 50 amps overall. So overall you've used 194 amp hours of the battery capacity, keeping in mind the safe depth of discharge of a lithium battery is 80% of the total capacity. So with my old setup of 220 amp hours, it would have been at 88% of the battery capacity and probably would have tripped the BMS and shut the fridges off. So with my new setup of 320 amp hours, we're only using 61%, meaning that we can do this sort of cooking, like these sort of big cooks without worrying at all. That scenario we just looked at was absolutely worst case. Let's look at a more realistic scenario. So it might just be you and say another person in the car. We're pretty much doing the same thing again, but we're budgeting 50 amp hours per day for cooking two meals. Assuming you're eating cereal for brekkie, 
This is a pretty realistic scenario and you'll chew through 159 amp hours of battery in 24 hours, meaning you'll have 1.6 days of time parked up without having to worry. This is assuming, of course, you're only going to the 80% depth of discharge. Now let's look at that scenario again, but let's just say we're cooking with gas, which is quite common. Not everyone does like cooking with lithium. I personally think it's much more convenient, but you're only using fridges, lights, and charging things as well. This would give you 2.3 days without charging, so probably three nights. I run a little bit more charging gear than the average person because a lot of the time I'm shooting for YouTube. So let's do an even more realistic scenario now. This one right here will be back to bare bones, one fridge, no freezer, one or two lights, charging with just your phone, and you can last for five days without charging this battery, which is pretty mega. And if you're not cooking with induction, that is a huge amount of capacity. I haven't taken into account solar because I still believe for the real estate available on my roof that I just can't get the juice in required to make a dent on induction. However, in those last two scenarios I spoke about, depending on the size of your panel, you could quite easily replenish the drained battery capacity each day to run the fridges. So let's just say you had a 120 watt panel and you were getting five amps per hour for 10 hours, you'd be getting 50 amp hours a day, which would cover the fridges for the last scenario. Now let's run the second scenario, which is the one where we're cooking with induction, but we're just sort of doing the two cooks a day and they're regular size cooks. Let's add solar to that to see if you put it into it. You're gonna add 50 amp hours per day, giving you 2.3 days of the initial 1.6, which is quite good. It's like quite a significant increase, but it's not magnitudes of difference that's going to allow you camped up by the river or by a lake for weeks on end. In conclusion, my absolute minimum battery capacity that I would recommend for induction cooking is 300 amp hours. And obviously this custom lithium that I've been using throughout this video does a cracker job of it. And it has a 330 amp constant discharge rate, which is something that I didn't have in my old setup. And if you wanna run stuff like air fries and induction, a battery with this sort of discharge rate is absolutely something I'd recommend. And yeah, my opinion on solar, I'm still out on it for my user case. I do think that it can work in certain scenarios, but since I barely camp in the same spot two nights in a row, I don't really think I'm gonna get much benefit from it. And I hope that has helped anyone building their own 12 volt system and specking their own battery. So 300 amp hours minimum if you are running induction, that is my recommendation. That brings us to the end of the video, everyone. I hope you learned something from it and I hope it helped you out on your 12 volt journey. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoy this sort of content. Thank you.